So, to begin, Vital Kick Drum Masterclass. So the first thing that we'll talk about is like choice of synth. Vital is one of the best synths to do kick drums in because it's got a large number of LFOs, which is great for doing complicated uh, pitch modulation. And in particular, it's got a very neat trick, which I will highlight later. So the basic structure of, uh, of a simple kick drum is just a single sine oscillator, which changes pitch. So if I take an LFO, and send it to the course pitch, uh, we get something kind of like that. And you know, already you're getting pretty close to a kick drum. Uh, one of the things that I like to do is go into the advanced tab and disable note tracking, which means that no matter what MIDI note you play, you get the same uh, actual note. This then means that you can actually tune your kick drum by just adjusting the transpose, right? Generally ends up being too high, so we just bring it down to something a little bit lower and, you know, think about kind of what range you'd like your kick drum to have, right? And and kind of the bottom of, of whatever the LFO is is going to be kind of the resting tone for the kick drum. And so listen mostly to that when you're uh, setting what the transpose ought to be. Um, I like to set it to envelope mode, and generally speaking, I like to set it to one eighth in terms of the length. Basically, whatever genre you're working on, I find that an eighth is a pretty good length for a kick. So, um, there's so like I was saying before, there's kind of three different. Uh, basic structures that you can use to, to do a kick drum. You can do it all in one oscillator, in which case, you know, you might segment a little bit and kind of have three different um, three different sections of your kick. This is actually a good thing to talk about. So with a kick drum, we kind of have three major sections, right? We've got the transient, we've got the punch, and we've got the tail, right? And the transient's generally very bright, very fast. The punch is what comes immediately after it. It's a little bit lower, uh, but it's really kind of what'll hit you in the chest. And then uh, the tail is, of course, that lowest part, which rings out for uh, the longest amount of time. So having a pitch envelope that looks something like this, allows you to kind of independently adjust those different uh, stages of your kick drum, which is kind of nice. Um, so you can, you can leave it here and have this be kind of the main body of your kick drum. You can also add a second oscillator, and this is a kind of an advanced trick. Uh, if you get a second oscillator out, and I'm just going to use uh, envelope number three to control the uh, oscillator level here. Uh, one thing that can be fun to do is to simulate the second head of the kick drum. So when you have a kick drum, it's got actually two drum heads. There's the one that the beater actually physically hits, and that's kind of what produces the the punch of it, and that that head tends to be tuned a little bit tighter, so it ends up being higher, uh, and it decays pretty quickly. But then uh, that skin being hit by the beater and moving compresses the air inside of the kick drum and pushes it uh, and pushes on the other head on the other side. And that one is generally what produces the lower resonant tail. So you can do something like uh, this, where you just add a little bit of attack and a little bit of decay and kind of have this like resonant bump. And if you layer that with uh, the original kick that we made, 
it can make it sound a little bit more realistic. Uh, I'm just going to quickly assign another uh, envelope to this section of the kick drum so that we can have it fade out over time. So that it... uh -huh. So that's with this second layer, that's without it. It's a pretty subtle difference, but it can kind of make your kick drums sound a little bit more acoustic, a little bit more natural, uh, make it a little bit less synthetic sounding, which can be really nice. Uh, another thing that you can do is you can actually fully separate the kind of transient and punch and uh, the tail. You can have oscillator two instead of just being this little ooh, ooh, kind of thing. You can have this actually be your main uh, main lower sound. And if you're doing that, then generally you'll want a little bit of a pitch fall on it. So we'll use a second envelope too. Dial in however much. pitchfall we'd like on our tail and then uh, increase the volume increase the the amount to which the envelope is controlling the level and then come back to this and instead of letting this uh, bring out we'll just bring the envelope back until it's just kind of playing the uh, the punch. And you can kind of mix and match. Oh, I'm playing different notes and I'm getting different stuff. I forgot to turn off note tracking on oscillator too. Yeah, so you can you can work like that as well. Um, the one thing that you should know about this method is that the relationship of these two envelopes to each other the volumes of the two different oscillators is very important and if you if you're looking for a kick with uh, a nice smooth shape to it you have to be uh, careful about how the two of them uh, interact and the best way to look at that is with an oscilloscope if you bring that up uh, let's see am I Showing the oscilloscope? No. So let's close vital. Here it is. So we can see that we get this section where the two are interacting, and sometimes we are losing uh, volume. Sometimes we're getting a huge spike of volume. And so it's very important that uh, if you're using two uh, oscillators, and and you want the behavior to be consistent that you disable phase randomization so in vital the phase randomization is set here and if you take all of these to zero then when we return to megascope we'll see that we're getting the same waveform every time and at this point if we adjust the uh, phase of vital uh, of one of these vital oscillators we can change how those two interact so uh, yeah those are kind of the three different ways of going about it so once you have how would more, how would a yeah. like if you're totally new to kick production how would how how would you like choose the pitch for your kick is there some way is it just pure experimentation or is there something you could do to kind of help help with choosing the different pitches mm -hmm. or envelopes and all of so, that because yeah yeah, I would say a that's a really good question. I would say that the number one way to 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 figure it out is just experimenting, right? Every kick drum 
is going to sound a little bit different and you're going to have the preferences that you like. Other people are going to have the preferences that they like. This is kind of the, in many ways, the point of synthesizing kick drums as opposed to just using samples is that you get control over how the pitch fall is, right? If you like a really punchy kick that takes a long, you know, that has a, a, a nice slow pitch fall that, that stays higher for longer, you can have that. If you like one that's a little darker, you can make it a little bit darker, right? And so this, this gives you creative control over how your kick drum sounds. And so you can, choosing this is, is the reason that this is worthwhile. I think. And a, a lot of different things are valid. I'll say specifically for drum and bass, I've noticed some kind of trends uh, in the subgenres in terms of what, what sorts of kick drums sound good when paired with certain types of sound design. I'd say for kind of a mainstream drum and bass sound, uh, generally you're looking for a kind of a punchier kick something like this when you're looking at something like neurofunk that has a lot of uh heavy bass design and a lot of kind of low mid content uh that punch might be undesirable and so you might end up bringing it a little bit lower and going for a little darker kick um yeah and right like so choosing like using references and just experimenting like yep as uh, so as here, it's it's not wise to just try to copy these settings in this tutorial, but just experiment and like to try to find yeah. your own preference. Absolutely, and you know yeah. you can change the range of how much the pitch changes. You know, if you go for uh, uh, less depth on the LFO, then then you get very very dark kicks. If you add more depth then you get kind of clickier transients. Oh, are we still on Megascope? That's so sad. So yeah, so so you can you can change the depth of your LFO and that will change kind of how clicky your uh, how clicky your cool. transient is, you know, your your and you can adjust this curve and get, you know, different lengths of transients, different shapes of transients. Um and all of that is really there. There are no hard and fast rules. It's just preference, and it's going to take a while. You're you're going to have to kind of mess around with the different settings and find what you like, right? But that's the fun and the joy of it too, you know. Yeah, totally. I think as a note for editing, I think this could fit really well on the like end part of the tutorial, like like yeah. ending notes and tips and tricks and like questions. Mm -hmm. Ah, right. Okay. Yep. Is, so I'll, I'll go ahead and start uh, kind of talking about what area of the... Yeah, I think you've done a really good job with that like so far. So that's like okay. why I even didn't say about it. Okay. So it's not a problem yet. Yeah, good. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate that. So let's see. So that's that's kind of basic structure. Um, so once you have kind of a basic kick drum sound sort of laid out, uh, for something a little bit darker, a little bit more kind of neurofunky, this might be where you end, right? There are plenty of kick drums that are... Uh, especially like trancey kind of kick drums as well, uh, tend to kind of stay dark, right? And just sort of be synthesized, sound like this, and, and that's what they are. But if you're after a little bit more traditional of a kick drum sound, then there are some ways to kind of spice it up a little bit. Uh, so what I'm talking about here is how you design more interesting transients and more interesting bodies. So, uh, one thing that you can do is you can layer in noise. So if we turn on the sample player, assign yet another volume envelope to the level of this white noise, 
Uh, or actually, I take it back. Instead of using a volume envelope, uh, I'm going to use an LFO because it gives me a little bit more control. With the the advantage of envelopes is that these parameters, the attack and the decay and the sustain, are modifiable. So if you plan to kind of change those over time, envelopes are really nice for that reason. But LFOs, since they have all of these, uh, an arbitrary number of points, an arbitrary number of points, you can uh, be a lot more precise with how you shape things. And in particular, I have a particular uh, shape that I'm, I'm interested in making, and so having a, uh, an LFO is going to be a, a better choice for me here. So you can uh, just layer some white noise onto the beginning of the sample to act as kind of extra transient information. And if uh, if you are working in vital, some other synths don't uh, let you change the pitch of the noise, but you can change the pitch of the noise to get kind of different colors of, of uh, transient. You can even use, uh, instead of white noise, you could use pink noise or brown noise. I kind of like how pink noise sounds on this one. And that adds a nice click to the beginning of your transient. You can also, uh, I'm just going to set this to 1 8 again, uh, the length of the LFO, uh, and set it to envelope so it only plays once. You can also layer some noise into the body of your kick drum. And I know that sounds a little bit weird, but take a listen to what it does. Right. So it's kind of like in a lot of uh, kick drum samples that you hear, they might be sliced out of breaks and there might actually be a hi-hat playing at the same time as the kick drum. Right. And so this kind of simulates that. Right. Like we 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 start with kind of the the spike of white noise at the beginning, and that's kind of the transient. That's the beater hitting the, the head of the kick drum and that impact. And then this noise that comes after is more like the the hi-hat layered on top of the kick drum or just the kind of natural acoustics of the room you know like a lot of the time you get uh you know some reverb or something that will uh kind of stretch out those higher frequencies a little bit longer past the transient and once again different Colors of noise do very different things. I like uh, I prefer pink noise on this particular one, so I'm gonna keep it like this. Um, but noise is not the only thing that you could layer in here, right? Like you might have uh, you might have some foley sounds, like you just hitting a, a cardboard box or something. Uh, I've recorded myself hitting some things over here, and so if you have a sample like this, you could just drag and drop that sample into Vital and use that. And that's another really interesting way to get different kind of character to your transients. Or, uh, you know, you could even do something totally crazy, like I have myself crinkling some paper here. And if you layer that in, that can again add some kind of texture to the body of the kick drum, which can sound kind of neat. Now, uh, in addition to layering samples and noise like this, one of the beautiful things that Vital allows you to do is you can also uh, use the sample as a source of ring modulation. And I won't go into what ring modulation does precisely. I'm just going to take this uh, LFO off of here so that the, uh, the sample player is still active, but the level is all the way down. And 
if we use rm from sample, that's another way to add some interesting texture. And uh, I'm trying to find a sample here that kind of displays how this is different from just layering it. Uh, let's try something like that. Some of the really high frequencies in this are kind of taken out when you use ring mod rather than just layering. Um, here's another good one that might display it a little bit. Yeah, so that's very different, right? So this sounds very different from that. But that sounds kind of neat, right? So ring modding from the sample player can be a really interesting way to do this. And, and notably, I'm ring modding on the punch of the kick, the, the oscillator that's doing the punch, not the one that's doing the, the, the tail. And that's because once the... Once the sample is finished playing, it will, and there's there's no more amplitude left in it. It will m mute the uh, the oscillator that's that's ring modding from it. So, if you if you use ring mod from sample and uh, you find that the body the the tail of your kick is just totally gone, that's why. And and the the solution is just to split out into two different oscillators or uh, put an uh, put an envelope on the actual ring mod amount that will also fix the problem. Um, another thing you can do to spice up your transients is you can use the drive on the filter. So if you enable one of the filters and uh, a nice way to kind of get a filter that is just applying distortion and not really doing too much to the actual signal in terms of filtering it, you can go to digital and go to the BPN band uh, peak notch setting. And if you take the uh, the blend all the way to the center here, then you just get this little peak. And you can put this all the way up at the top or all the way down at the bottom, and it won't affect the overall signal too, too much. So you can use the drive from the filter to get a hard style kick if you so desire it. <laughs> or uh, you can use an envelope or an LFO to just apply that drive to the very beginning of the sound, right? Just make it really, really clicky. And just apply it to the transient or just apply it to the transient and the punch and kind of leave the tail alone. This is kind of how I like to do it. So that's with, that's without. It's adding a little bit of grit to it. Um, another thing that you can do is you can use this third oscillator and you can actually uh, do FM from the third oscillator. Instead of doing uh, RM, you could use FM from oscillator three. And... Uh, assign some kind of an LFO or an envelope to that. And it sounds really terrible, but if you just sweep down very quickly, you can get some nice kind of crunchy sounding stuff out of that. And if you take the pitch all the way up, you can get some different tones that way as well. Uh, I find this is kind of nice for getting kind of woodier, knockier kind of tones out of uh, kick drums using FM like this, especially at kind of lower amounts, something like that. Um, but it's all totally up to you, you know, you can experiment and that's the beauty of it. So yes, so we're going over to 
mobs tomorrow at four. Okay. Okay. So I don't schedule anything for that. And then we're gonna have dinner or play games for and after. Okay. So that's a bit much. There we go. Um, and once again, at this point, you could totally call it done. But you can take it even further. If you go over to the effects section, there are all manner of different things that you can add that will change the character and, and uh, really push it into interesting territory. So one of the most obvious is, of course, distortion. which can nicely saturate, kind of fatten up your kick. If you like a little bit more tonal kicks, this is a great way to get a little bit more tone out of them. Uh, you can also, you can again use the drive on the filter here if you decide that you want to do it after some of the other effects. Um, you can take advantage of the compressor. So, especially if you start doing FM or sample layering or ring mod. You can get some really interesting tones out of this. And uh, because Vital is excellent, you have a dry-wet control. So if it's bringing out some kind of weird resonance in the, in the sample that you're using that you don't like, you can just kind of take the mix down, still get a good portion of that, uh, but not be... Uh, totally doomed. And of course, you can adjust how much of each band you'd like. The release knob can be another really great way to kind of tame that like OTT tail effect that you get. Increasing the release will get rid of that kind of swell back up that it does after the end of the things. When you have the mix all the way up, having the attack set to something a little more kind of lets some of that punch through, where having it shorter really means it's just that clicky transient and you don't have as much punch. So I kind of like the sound of that, personally. Um, now. The next couple of things I'm going to talk about are stuff. This, this is the real black voodoo magic that people don't tell you. These are effects that, that most people don't use on their kick drums, but which can be used to interesting effect. So one is chorus. You, you listen to that and you're like, there's no way that's going to be good, right? But if you turn the delays down a bit, you turn the depth really low, you reduce the number of voices, and take down the feedback, maybe even uh, set the frequency to freeze such that the voices aren't moving around. You can get some kind of interesting stereo information in there. And because we're using the, uh, the built-in filters, we can restrict that to just kind of the high end information and say, this is, this is where we want interesting stereo to be and dial back the mix. And now our sub is not totally wacky stereo sub, which generally doesn't sound good when uh, collapsed down to mono and played on a subwoofer. Generally, the mix knob for a chorus uh, on a kick has to be pretty darn low. You're not looking at anything above like 25% at the absolute maximum. It's a subtle effect. Um, you can also use a flanger on a kick drum. So once again, you're going to turn it on. You're going to think there's no way this is going to work. But what you got to do 
is once again set it to freeze such that it's not moving. Um, make sure that the offset is either 100% or 0%, such that the two, uh, the left and right signal are completely aligned, at which point now you've basically just got a comb filter, right? But if you take the center really high up, play with the feedback and the mix knobs and just apply it kind of gently and play with positive or negative feedback that can create a kind of an interesting texture Just a little bit of a kind of a crunchiness to the transient. You can also use delay on a kick drum. Obviously, you don't want it that long, but if you set it to seconds, And then you, again, use the built-in filter. And play with the feedback. you can get some kind of interesting effects. Again, very, very, very low mix amounts, uh, just some kind of subtle changes to make it interesting. And you can use whatever mode you like. You can use stereo, you can use ping pong. And that can, again, add some kind of stereo information to your kick drum. Uh, and last but not least, of course, you can always add reverb. And reverb is a great way to make your kick sound a little bit more acoustic, a little bit more natural. Generally, I like to go for pretty short times and pretty small sizes and pretty gentle mix amounts. Also, I like to make my kick reverbs pretty dark. And uh, always a good thing to check if you take your mix all the way up, you can use that to adjust your pre-low cut so that you're not applying reverb to your sub. And kind of dial it into wherever sounds are most appropriate, and then dial it back down to kind of find what makes the most sense for your mix. And once you get it here, I mean, this, is much more interesting than that. All the little things add up to really enhance uh, the interest of kind of the mid-range and top end of your kick to make them more unusual, more unique. Uh, you can, of course, uh, just some final cleanup things. If you have applied some stereo effects and uh, they sound good, but they're just a bit much in terms of what they're doing to uh, the stereo field. Like if you uh, go ahead and mono your kick and it sounds a little bit weak, a little bit weird like this, you can take down the stereo spread in Vital just by adjusting this knob here. And that will go all the way from mono to fully spread. And you can kind of dial in how much information you want to really be stereo. This is going to be something that's pretty subtle. You're going to have to listen on headphones if you really want to uh, 
hear the effect of this, I think. Um, like I talked about before, it can be really important to, uh, at some point, turn off phase randomization for your kick and make sure that you're getting a kind of a consistent waveform. If you get in random spikes in places that you don't expect them, that can clip into your limiter, that can do weird stuff. Generally, you get more control when you turn the phase randomization off uh, and then select the phase manually using the phase offset control. Um, if your tail of your kick is a bit long, you can use the master volume envelope or put an LFO even on the master envelope or the master uh, volume, I should say. And that lets you post effects. Let's you post effects do do an envelope that shaves off the tail of your kick and makes it just as long as you'd like it to be. Um, for added playability, you can also uh, set the voices to one to make it monophonic so that when you play multiple notes, it doesn't actually make multiple kicks and sound real strange. And of course, you can use the built-in EQ or the built-in filter to do some tone shaping if there's a particular area that seems like it's being a bit unruly, you can tame that. Or really bring out some of those interesting characteristics in the top end. Clip it into your limiter if you feel like uh, being a bit of a masochist. Or roll off some of the lows, perhaps if you're a, a liquid drum and bass producer and you don't want quite so much sub going on, so that you got room for those huge reasons. And of course, excellent tip for sound design in any situation. Always make sure to A, B your changes, right? It can be really easy to to get in here and do all sorts of stuff and, and convince yourself that it sounds better, but then if you actually listen to the original, make sure that it sounds like an improvement to you. If you're not sure whether it's an improvement, one of the tricks I like to use is to close my eyes, click the bypass button a bunch of times, keep them closed, listen, click once more, listen again decide which I like, and then open my eyes and see. So that's all we've got time for today. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss our next video. And let us know in the comments any questions that you might have and what kind of content you'd like to see next from us. If you want to check out our sample and preset packs, head on over to blacklotusaudio.com. As always, have a great day and see you next time. <laughs>